somebody suggested to me that I should uh, make a video about the boat itself uh, to show everything uh, what uh, what the features are of the boat and what I did install and so on so although I showed uh, several aspects um, of the boat in, uh, uh, in in my videos of the past on my YouTube channel uh, I'll now uh, make a one uh, one uh, complete uh, let's say tour on the boat. Uh, actually, I'm recording this uh, second time now. I did all of that yesterday, uh, but unfortunately, uh, stupid me, I dropped my smartphone, which I recorded it. Uh, so, which actually was the flagship. So I uh, sunk it. I dropped it into the sea accidentally. Uh, and I just could see it uh, sink down and uh, just nothing do but as a golden rule never jump into the water uh, from a moving boat if specifically if you're single-handed so I simply couldn't do anything um, however um, I know people who regularly sink uh, their drones, uh, which are much more expensive. However, I will um, find a new one. So actually I'm recording this now with my previous uh, smartphone, that's a Galaxy S10, uh, which has an excellent camera as well, but of course the S22 is so the flagship of uh, the, 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 not the latest, but a generation before. Um, okay, so however, let's make a tour uh, through the boat. So first uh, let's uh, make a quick tour inside. Then I show you all technical details, uh, what uh, we can find here. And then we go outside. Uh, the weather is really perfect at the moment, uh, full sails up and uh, uh, on a broad reach, uh, so I can explain everything uh, outside. So first of all, here we are in the saloon. Uh, in this corner here, uh, that's my navigation desk. Uh, and I will explain that uh, a little bit more later. Um, on the other side, you can see the saloon. It's uh, very comfortable. So actually from my, my perspective uh, it's a little bit too comfortable because uh, it wastes um, well some space that I, uh, that I uh, do not need actually since I'm alone or just uh, let's say with my uh, daughter or uh, my, my children uh, I don't need that much space and I actually um, would prefer to have here uh, on this side a uh, a space where I can put the wet clothes without making uh, all those uh, cushions and so wet. Uh, but maybe that's a future project uh, for, uh, let's say, after this trip. I'm um, not really sure, maybe I refit everything a little bit or uh, buy another boat. Not sure what, uh, what uh, I'll do, however. Uh, let's continue and uh, go forward. So uh, here's the forward end. So here is uh, my kitchen. Um, this is a gas stove as usual. I can also uh, break uh, bread here. Uh, kitchen sink. Uh, and um, well, where is kitchen gear here? Um, spices and uh, other stuff that I regularly need. Here is my fruit storage, so uh, tomatoes from uh, Sardinia, apples, lemons, onions, cucumbers, um, various stuff. Uh, here in front we have a, a refrigerator. 
So some stuff uh, in there, but uh, actually uh, I switched it off. Uh, it's, it doesn't work since I was in Sardinia, so it's switched off since many days. Uh, simply because it uh, drains the battery uh, too much. Um, I cannot produce uh, the energy just with the solar panel. Um, that's impossible, so I simply switched it off. And specifically with uh, the provision uh, provisioning uh, for this trip, I uh, took specifically care on uh, food uh, that um, that uh, uh, keeps uh, as long as possible fresh. So there's a, a lot of, let's say, uh, um, uh, sausage-like salami or uh, hard uh, uh, cheese and other dried uh, dried foods uh, uh, like beans here, for example. Um, that nothing of them of, uh, of all them. Uh, gets uh, quickly bad so uh, it's uh, it's not so much a need for the refrigerator and uh, except for beer but as long as I'm on the way here single-handed I don't drink beer at all uh, no alcohol um, that's uh, just uh, once I'm in the port again then I'll have a beer of course so let's continue here behind me. There is a cabin, uh, a bunk cabin. It looks as usual. So an upper and a lower bunk bed here. Um, and here a closet for stuff. Actually it's uh, cur currently empty since uh, it's uh, only needed for my guests. Here, that's my immersion suit, uh, just in case uh, I would have to uh, jump into the life raft in Arctic waters to not freeze. Um, nothing else here. Here's some multimedia equipment. Uh, that's my drone. So, let's go further to the bow. So here in between, uh, that's actually my uh, shower, uh, inside shower. Here is, well, a sink and uh, usual stuff. Uh, you have here shower gel and uh, all of that. Here, if we turn around on the other side, as usual, a typical um, a typical toilet and here in front this is my cozy front cabin so here I have everything all close everything that I need for the next half year uh, hopefully so yesterday I uh, cleaned everything a little bit um, unfortunately, as I said, um, the, um, uh, I dropped my, uh, my phone into the sea, so I lost everything because I had this on my, uh, on my video as well to show a little bit um, the living on, on my boat. I even had a seaman-like uh, shower outside with a bucket of salty water. However, I will redo this at some time again. So if we look here uh, into the into the front uh, section of this cabin, uh, there is a door uh, where behind this is uh, the anchor chain. And I can open this. And here you see that's um, the locker for, for the chain. It comes here. Uh, and here is a second. Uh, here that's uh, for the second uh, for the line for the anchor uh, for the secondary anchor I have here a long line which I can you could use as well so and of course that's uh, not 100% watertight but uh, it drains uh, with a hose into the bilge So, first let's have a look at the navigation desk. 
So there's a lot of stuff uh, and there's a lot that I uh, did install um, after I bought the boat. So first of all here that's um, uh, that's uh, the, the panel with, with all switches that's uh, original as uh, it uh, was uh, from uh, as it was uh, when it, the boat was built. 40 years ago, so uh, by Pelure, that's uh, all uh, in uh, written in Spanish. And here below there is some stuff that I added, uh, even during this trip already. Um, so let's have a look uh, what all that is. So here, uh, here are some, uh, that's all uh, lights, uh, cabin lights, uh, outside lights for working, uh, a light for the, for the engine room. Uh, that's all navigation lights, so the red, green, anchor, steaming light and so on. Here on the right side we have, uh, well, water pump, uh, refrigerator uh, uh, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and here that's uh, the instruments and that's battery charger and, uh, and, and the mains for shore power. So actually uh, today uh, um, nobody would do this uh, to put uh, actually the 230 volts uh, beneath the 12 uh, volts but uh, well at the time then uh, it was done like that. So however I had a look inside and it's, uh, it's good separated from each other so that nothing can happen. happen. So here below uh, that's uh, my nav tags. Um, I receive navigational warnings and uh, weather reports here um, and uh, that's uh, a very, uh, let's say, very important device in, in my opinion since it, it's standalone, it, it simply receives data and, and then I can scroll through and, and read what's uh, important for me uh, or not. Here on the, on the left side I added an additional switch panel since I installed so many devices that it was necessary. Uh, to have uh, additional switches. Uh, what I have here is uh, that's my uh, my computer. There is a built-in boat computer uh, which is used for um, for navigation and, and all electronic stuff uh, on that boat. Then here is my masthead camera, that's a radar, that's an ethernet switch because all of that is modern technology let's say and all of that is connected through ethernet. Uh, that's uh, empty and that's uh, the AIS silent mode um, and what I have here on the right side this is my battery monitor I can uh, I can uh, here um, just uh, scroll through these uh, uh, this uh, through this uh, display here and 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 have a look what uh, what, uh, what 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 amps are currently drained? Uh, how many hours are left? And and the voltage of the battery and stuff like that. Uh, and that's a, a USB power charge unit for uh, power charging uh, for power charging USB devices with 65 watts. And here on the right side, so this is the mouse for my computer. Uh, that's an active uh, radar transponder, so if, uh, if it receives a radar, uh, let's say a radar ping from, from another uh, vessel, it then replies uh, that I'm uh, good visible on their radar. And that's a really important device in my opinion, specifically if you're uh, single-handed, because I want to be very visible for other boats. Uh, since I, I obviously can't uh, be 24 hours on the helm outside and have a look. So I have to sleep at some time. And that's uh, one of the devices which are, in my opinion, very important. So, uh, and this is a control unit for um, the solar panel, uh, which charges the batteries. Yes, so here, uh, if I continue to this side, uh, there is a, um, that's an APIRP, I think an emergency device, you're familiar with that. Here on the right side, that's uh, the screen. Uh, it's actually a, a 21 inch, uh, 22 inch uh, uh, display, computer display. Um, where I can see everything that I like. 
So, uh, and I do, I, uh, um, it's, it's, it's used, uh, it's, it's a, a, a regular computer actually, and it's used uh, by, with a keyboard and a mouse. It's very comfortable in my opinion. So what we see here actually is uh, there, there you can see rough overview where I am now. So uh, that's Sardinia. Uh, here I started, and that's uh, that's the track actually. And so at the moment I'm here. Uh, that's uh, the Balearic Islands. Uh, the, this here is Spain, and here uh, that's uh, the Strait of Gibraltar. And uh, I can zoom in here. So of course I'm far out. Um, there is not much traffic here. Uh, what I can see here, these are AIS targets, so other vessels out here, uh, typically these are some, some kind of merchant vessels, so cargo ships or whatever. So let's have a query, make a target query. Here it shows me all information, so yes, it's a Class A AIS a cargo ship underway using engine. 225 times uh, 32 meters. It's making 14.6 uh, knots. And uh, what else I could uh, query here is uh, the CPA. So this is 13 miles in about one hour and let's say one hour and 20 minutes. There's no danger at all. So no, no, no danger for collision. I can also make this visible by this show target CPA. So that's uh, uh, the CPA. So 20 miles. That's uh, far away enough so no worries uh, yes that's it I also have uh, my master camera and my radar I'll show you but first let's switch it on so master camera radar Ethernet switch so have a look at the master camera uh, let's activate it here uh, can have a look here so that's uh, what it looks like so well nothing to see of course there is nothing um, uh, the lens of the camera is a little bit dirty uh, but I will uh, clean it uh, when I'm in Spain so my next desti destination is planned to be in Malaga um, and there I have to climb the mast uh, because um, I want to check the rig, everything, uh, that's uh, one part and there I can clean the lens of the camera a little bit. Uh, so a few, few days to go there um, for, well, revisiting everything and just have a check uh, to be on the safe side. So let's, uh, let me show you the radar. Radar is here. I activate the radar, uh, and here I have the radar screen. So, actually, um, uh, I can, I could, I could even open the radar. Can uh, even in parallel open two screens with two different ranges. I start, stop it here, and then it starts transmitting. Uh, actually, since there is not much out here, we will not see anything, um, most probably. So, yes, here, uh, it's really tiny, you probably can't see it, it's not very visible. But if I go, these, these two vessels here actually uh, could be visible here on the radar. Uh, you won't see it, but some at some time... Here I can see now this dot here. Uh, however, that's pretty far away. So according to the radar, that's about uh, 16 nautical miles away. So that's pretty far. Um, and uh, I'm more interested in, in uh, within targets in, in a lower range. So I'm currently at the 24 nautical miles range. So the whole, the, the, the outer ring here is uh, 24 miles. Uh, I can zoom in a little bit. Let's see, I go here to eight nautical miles. If here, eight nautical miles. Uh, but here's simply nothing. Uh, one uh, reason why we can't see these, uh, these boats very well is because I installed uh, the uh, radar on the mast on the stern of the boat and, and not uh, 
uh, and not uh, on, on the mast of the boat. So actually that's, uh, there is a general discussion about where to install the radar and you see it very common on, uh, on uh, boats that uh, they have installed it some way up in the mast. Uh, let's say at the first spreaders or something like that. I don't have it. I installed it on the stern and you will see that as well, specific, specifically if you look at ocean going boats. Um, and the reason simply is that um, the, uh, let's, uh, the VHF tells me something. Um, the reason simply is that uh, the radar has an opening, uh, opening cone, so it does not look down, it looks forward. And uh, it has, and the range from the radar is, is similar to light, so, so it, can, it, it cannot look, let's say, beyond the horizon. Um, so the further you put it up, uh, the farther you can see in distance, of course. But uh, since it does not look down, you will lose everything uh, around, the, which is directly around from your boat. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's better to have it more, not so high up, because I'm not interested in targets which are 20 miles away. They, that, that's so far away, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm more interested in targets which are directly uh, around my boat, which could be a potential danger. So that's uh, why I have it on the mast, and the mast is just, let's say, the height from the water level is uh, 5 meters or something like that. So uh, in the far distance I can only see large uh, vessels, uh, really large ves vessels with a high bridge of, let's say, uh, 50 or 60 meters, some modern big container ships, stuff like that I can see. Now uh, the smaller ones uh, will get invisible. Uh, but as I said, it does not matter what happens 20 miles away uh, of your current position. So what else uh, can I see here? Also I can uh, see the battery monitor. Uh, there is an app for the smartphone or uh, a software for the computer. Uh, I'll show you. And Victron Connect. Here is a smart monitor. Actually, I have a second device, but uh, that's battery charger, which uh, has no power uh, at the moment, of course. So I click here into it, and it connects, and I can see everything here. So state of charge is 94%. Uh, voltage, current amps, uh, power consumption in watts, uh, how many days are remaining, and uh, starter starter battery uh, there's even some uh, history and and curve stuff like that um, however so that's it so let's have a look where all these technical stuff come comes from so uh, the behind the scenes uh, the network everything like that so for that I have to look uh, we have to look um, below the companion way on this boat so I can open this here and uh, open this and have a look here in two. Uh, here is a lot of uh, technical stuff. I even have a light here. So let's switch this on. So, light. Uh, so first have a look at all what I have here. So that's uh, the Ethernet, uh, Ethernet switch. Uh, here it connects uh, the radar, the masthead camera, and uh, the computer. So the computer actually is this here. So there are a bunch of USB connections, uh, of course, to the mouse, to the keyboard, and to the bus, to the NMEA 2000 bus. So this red device here, uh, that's a bridge from uh, NMEA 2K to USB and it bridges all data between the navigation system so the computer uh, and the computer and uh, the uh, the bus of uh, the of the boat so um, what we can see here uh, this is an active AIS transponder which um, so uh, on one hand receives uh, the AIS information uh, from other boats so that I can see it in my navigation software. That's what I showed you before. 
uh, and it's active which means it also transmits my position to the other boat so that they can see me as well uh, on their navigation system and that's in my opinion really important it's it's highly important for uh, single-handed sailors to be as visible as possible to other uh, vessels around as I already said so let's have a look uh, in more in into the back here uh, so what we can see here is the battery charger that's um, that's a Victron device as well and if it's connected to the shore power I um, it I can connect to it uh, with Bluetooth as well with the same software that I showed you uh, and have um, have a look at uh, charging uh, how, how charging is going of the battery uh, and all that you see here is the Enmea 2k stuff so So the, the boat is fully equipped with everything and Mea 2K, it's all new. Uh, this here is uh, the uh, ITC5 bridge, so actually everything uh, or most of the stuff is from Raymarine, so it's called SeaTalk and G, but SeaTalk and G actually is and Mea 2K. So this is uh, the bridge for the sensors. So here the cables come in from uh, the depth sensor, uh, temperature, uh, the uh, the paddle wheel for for the speedometer and uh, the wind uh, wind meter and all that stuff goes in here and is bridged to uh, the Enmea 2000 bus. Uh, here other devices connect. For example, this here is a for the barometric pressure, air pressure. Then I have connections here, of course, to the USB bridge. I have con connections to the outside. Um, display, I have connections to the AIS device and so on. Uh, this yellow here, for example, is the connection to the VHF um, that I that the VHF knows about the boat position uh, and uh, speed and course as well and a lot of other stuff. So that's all NMEA 2000 uh, bus system here. So if we look further into this uh, room, what we see here, that's uh, that's the shaft of the rudder. So um, currently it doesn't move, as you can see, because it's locked. Uh, currently the wind, uh, the wind, um, the wind vane is engaged. So if the wind vane is engaged, the uh, rudder has to be locked. Um, and here uh, in the background we, we can't see it uh, there it goes up to um, to uh, to the steering wheel uh, which then can can move uh, that here uh, the chain here on the left side and this blue thing here that's uh, the electric uh, the motor for the electric autopilot uh, and uh, what else do we see here uh, here um, here on starboard actually so this this device here that's uh, the uh, Vipasto heater um, which is necessary in winter so since I'm on the way here I started uh, at the beginning of May I hadn't uh, didn't have to use it luckily uh, but in Croatia in winter it can be pretty cold and uh, there you should have a uh, there you should have a heater uh, since well it's getting cold most of you I think know Croatia just from summertime there it's pretty hot but I'm uh, down there sailing uh, the whole year so also in December and January there we need a heater because it can uh, be around zero degrees and it's 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 freezing cold in the morning this here uh, this is uh, the power distribution unit for charging uh, the different uh, battery banks uh, that's uh, the steering, uh, that's uh, the control unit for uh, the Webasto heater and uh, here that's uh, the engine panel from the rear side. So one last thing, that's actually the wireless access point for uh, my Starlink antenna. Um, it's not properly installed, I just put it here uh, because I had no time I, uh, to install that properly, maybe I do that somewhere else. So let's have a look at some other details of the boat. Uh, close this again here.
So this is a traditional long keel boat, so everything is a little bit different than uh, you are probably probably familiar with. Um, so uh, there is uh, in the floor a lot of uh, stuff as well, and uh, I'll show you here. You can see I can open these. Uh, let's have a look inside. Here, that's the frontmost. If we look in, as you can see. Um, there's a lot of stuff uh, here. Uh, this actually is the freshwater pump, so it's not so complicated as it looks like. That's a freshwater pump. Uh, let's go around here a little bit. So it's a better view, I think. So that's a diesel filter, uh, diesel main switch here, uh, and here. Uh, all those uh, all those valves here are uh, to to drain uh, drain water from the boiler, drain water from the uh, diesel uh, tank, from the water tanks, and so on. Uh, here, this here on the bottom is to uh, drain the gray water tank for cleaning it. Uh, here on the other side, here we can see. Uh, this here is um, the engine cooling, the seacock for engine cooling, so it's open now. And uh, here, uh, that's uh, the seawater filter, so as you can see, there's nothing in here, it's clean. Uh, well, yes, and on the other side, the yellow thing, obviously that's uh, the engine. Uh, but we can open uh, the, next, uh, uh, the next one. So let's close this. So that's uh, the engine, uh, it's a um, 42 horsepower diesel engine um, with a three blade, uh, powerful three blade propeller, uh, actually one, two, three, four cylinders here, uh, that's uh, for checking the oil here, uh, air intake, uh, this here uh, is uh, oil uh, to, to ref uh, refill the oil. Well, general, typical uh, diesel engine, nothing special here. Uh, here that's an alternator for charging. So let's open this. And what we can see here, uh, that's, uh, as you can see, there's something running. So that's a gearbox here. Uh, and that's a propeller shaft. Going here and here behind in the water is the propeller. And that's running, of course, because the boat is moving. And here down, that's uh, that's the bilge sump. You can see it's uh, deep. And a little bit of water is in there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't never empty completely. So everything drains in there. Uh, well, yes, uh, that's the exhaust hose here. Uh, that's uh, these two are for the, the, the uh, making hot water uh, for the boiler, which is installed here in this locker. And the boat has a lot of uh, storage um, storage room. It's actually uh, below all that cushions. Uh, I'll show you a little bit, so we can look here inside. So open this. You can see. There's a lot of space, so actually that's uh, that's my vacuum, and here I have a lot of bottles of water. Uh, there is another such a, a uh, storage uh, locker. There's water in 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 there as well, and here behind as well. So let's close it. And then here on the back, I can open this. You see. There is room as well, so let's open this. Um, I open this and you see there is a lot of food. Uh, on one hand I have here uh, instant soups, I have here a lot of um, instant uh, meal, it's average supermarket instant meals, and but I also have here um, um, professional expedition food, so that's freeze-dried, high-quality food. Uh, I have a lot, 
and uh, the boat is completely full everywhere with stuff like that and I have here uh, cans of food uh, here uh, milk uh, and and a lot of other stuff uh, on my boat so uh, let's uh, look a little bit here down here are the batteries uh, of the boat I can show you as well here uh, here are here, here are the batteries. Um, these two black are uh, the service batteries, uh, 160, 180 amps each, so th 360 in total. Unfortunately, they are not new, so I hope that they uh, hold at least for this trip. Uh, this battery here is uh, the for the engine uh, to start the engine and all the cabling I completely renewed the cabling it was not really very solid uh, it was even partially wrongly connected uh, and here in the background uh, this here that's uh, the sensor um, the sensor which I showed you um, where I can have the app uh, the software to monitor so that's actually the, the the hardware device which does the monitoring so so all current which flows in and out of the battery has to traverse this shunt here and here's the measurement unit uh, that that does all that magic so here on the other side there is a lot of storage room as well let's have a look inside so actually Yesterday there happened a lucky uh, coincident. Uh, as you can see here, I stow a little bit uh, beer. Yesterday, uh, when I opened this, uh, I uh, found out that uh, some uh, cans were broken, uh, and uh, I had this, uh, you know, sweet smell on the boat all over. But I could not really. Uh, find out um, what it is so when I uh, did this video yesterday <laughs> and I looked in here I immediately found what was wrong and then I took one of these cans and it actually almost exploded uh, within my hand unfortunately uh, that's now that uh, that clip is now 2700 meters below sea level so here is some beer um, but of course not just beer uh, that's uh, for somebody that I visit in uh, I'd like to visit in uh, Norway and he'll get a present of me uh, and this present will be some various kinds of beer uh, but as you can see there are food cans as well uh, rice uh, coffee and a lot of other water juice um, a lot of additional stuff here for me so what we see here is actually this yellow thing here that's uh, my life raft uh, and here I have uh, a lot of other stuff some Dyneema ropes uh, some here tools uh, various tools here another toolbox uh, here that's actually my sextant just in case and a bunch of other things so actually that's not all tools that I have on my boat I have a lot of other places but I don't want I don't want to open every single uh, every single storage uh, here just uh, for the video I think it's also getting boring a little bit one last thing here another locker oh, it opens itself uh, what you can see here yes that's my various life jackets I have here uh, there's my climbing gear uh, for climbing the mast uh, spare jacket um, uh, the bosons chair is here the lifelines uh, a lot of safety stuff here so that's a lot of stuff inside here um, let's go outside and I show you everything else on the outside I'll clip on my microphone uh, for a better sound quality 
uh, and then we uh, we can uh, get to the outside. I did a lot of recording, uh, many hundreds of hours of video for uh, of clips for my videos, and I tell you, uh, getting the audio right is the most difficult thing. Actually, more difficult than getting the the video right. I just found out that I seem to have a broken cable. So let's give it a try. Uh, here we go. Let's have a look at the outside. As you can see, everything blue all around. Um, uh, the first thing that you can see here in the background is uh, uh, this uh, this thing here. It's uh, my wind vane, the wind steering unit. Um, so let's explain that a little bit. So here on top that's uh, the wind vane and as you can see it can move uh, it can move to both sides uh, and uh, by moving by moving the wind vane it here that's the gearbox it uh, transmit it transmit the moving of the wind vane to the rudder. So here that's actually a tiller where, where I could manually uh, steer the boat. Uh, and uh, it transmits the force to the rudder and the rudder actually is here. And uh, well, yes, it simply steers the boat. It's a super simple thing which is uh, very important so it's definitely highly important to me uh, since it saves so much energy uh, energy from uh, from my battery so the electric autopilot uh, would take much more energy uh, and this simply needs no energy at all uh, all you have to do is uh, from time to time you have to um, adapt the course a little bit since it steers uh, with the apparent wind so if the wind changes uh, or in strength or direction uh, you have to adjust this here so okay obviously that's uh, uh, to rescue you somebody uh, this uh, as well it's uh, automatically inflating horseshoe uh, with a antenna with a light that's uh, used in a man overboard situation. Obviously that doesn't help me uh, when I'm alone, but uh, I'm not always alone, so uh, I'm equipped with this. I have every, actually every necessary equipment, uh, uh, which I should have, except uh, the satellite telephone, which I couldn't afford, uh, but everything else uh, I have. So this thing here is uh, the Starlink antenna. It uh, worked uh, as already explained. So basically it works well, but not here, uh, in the middle of the Western Basin of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, let's have a look at uh, all that wind channels here uh, a little bit. So uh, that's uh, the, Genoa, uh, the Genoa sheet. Um, that's uh, my preventer line here and uh, that's uh, here is a second uh, small winch and this is uh, that's the sheet for uh, for my stay sail uh, and here I have a, a manual depth sounder so I made this two years ago when uh, the depth sounder of the boat uh, did not work here we have uh, here we have the displays. So you can see these uh, three here are uh, old ones, uh, and I uh, replaced the full electronic. I just kept them since, uh, as you can see, they are still working. Uh, also, that's uh, the depth. It does work. Also, it, in the moment, it just uh, that's just nothing because it's 2,000 meters deep. It it just uh, displays nuts. 
And this is uh, my modern display, which is connected to the bus. And uh, as usual, uh, I can hear, you know, this uh, scroll through and have uh, a bunch of other uh, things to display. Uh, it's conf highly configurable and so on. So my steering wheel, uh, it's in the moment locked in position uh, because as I showed you, um, the wind steering unit uh, currently is steering the boat. So let's uh, go a little bit forward, have a look to the front section of the boat. As you can see, uh, we're sailing. Uh, it's a broad reach. So this line here is uh, the main sheet. Uh, here you can see uh, this is my preventer line here. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, let's go a little bit forward. So let's start with this here. Uh, that's my stay sail. Uh, it's new. And uh, I use the stay sail when uh, in stronger winds on a upwind passage of let's say 20 or 25 knots or more, uh, then I can use the stay sail instead of the, uh, of the large Genoa. Uh, it works really pretty well. Uh, I put the stay sail uh, on the cutter stay, which I have here in front. So this here, this here is uh, my cutter stay and uh, it goes up here up to the mast, you see a little bit downwards above the spreaders uh, and uh, it works very well because this Genoa that you see here uh, has uh, about 50 square meters and 50 square meters definitely is a lot. Uh, so I have to refit and at some point uh, it does not work pretty well. Uh, as usual with uh, um, strongly reefed uh, Genoas, uh, big Genoas, they do not work very well then. So it's better to completely uh, drop it and uh, put a smaller stay sail up, which I do, which uh, works far better. So, um, well, the Genoa here behind me, it's a completely new Genoa. Uh, as I said, it's a 50 square meter, um, 50 square meter, uh, completely new sail. Uh, you might see this, it's a three radial cut uh, from a very strong bulletproof material. Uh, it's uh, very similar to what I have on the mainsail, I'll show you immediately. Uh, the mainsail is made from Hydronet, uh, it's said to be bulletproof and uh, the Genoa, it's, uh, the, the material has a little bit of a different name, but I think it's almost the same, uh, just a little bit other weight. Uh, yes, here and uh, this, is, uh, this is the furla and I furl it up there. So here in front also, uh, here you can see uh, the windlass. So this is the windlass and uh, the chain uh, goes here uh, to this anchor. So actually that's a Rockna 20 kilo. It's a little bit oversized, but uh, I followed the general, um, uh, th general recommendations. If you are going to the Arctic and uh, want to uh, anchor there, you should have an oversized anchor. So that's what I did. Actually, I wanted to have the, um, uh, the, the newer Rockna Vulcan anchor, uh, which fits better since you can see that uh, the, uh, this uh, anchor uh, does not really perfect fit here onto the bow of this boat. Uh, that's why I wanted to have the Vulcan uh, and it's say that it holds even better. If you look at the anchor desk of the SV Penelope, uh, but uh, the, a new Vulcan uh, would cost 700 uh, without uh, shipping costs and I simply couldn't afford. And then I luckily found uh, somebody who sold uh, this used Rockner 
uh, which, uh, which is also perfect, except that it does not really fit very well. However, it doesn't matter. So, let's have a look at the mast section. Everything in the boat is controlled uh, here from the mast, except the sheets uh, which are uh, in the back. So first of all, this is my, uh, this is my uh, also new uh, mainsail. So actually I bought uh, this uh, mainsail last year, so it's not completely new, but almost new. It's a full patent uh, mainsail uh, in a tree radial cut uh, with uh, the bulletproof material hydronet. Uh, it has three, uh, three reefs. Uh, three deep, uh, three deep reefs actually, um, because uh, I, uh, by intention, so let's say a typical Mediterranean sea, uh, sail wouldn't have such deep reefs. It's actually made for uh, going into more heavy weather. So I can have uh, uh, three reef if I have the, the, the third reefs in, uh, the, the third, uh, third reef in, then. Uh, it's only really a small fraction of, of uh, the complete mainsail. So you can see here the reefs uh, on, uh, on the back of the sail. So here, this is uh, the first reef. Uh, here, here actually the red line is uh, the second reef. And if you look up a little bit here, uh, the yellow line, this is, uh, the third reef and there is not much left so also the reefs can uh, you can see here uh, that's uh, the ring of the first reef uh, here uh, this is the second and the third is somewhere here at the spread earth here so it's halfway up and uh, as usual all reefing lines come out here so that's uh, the first, uh, the second, and the third reef, uh, which uh, go here to the winch and then I can uh, fix it here on the cleats. So it's actually always a discussion about uh, having uh, uh, what kind of reefing system you have. So uh, this is actually a completely traditional uh, reefing system for, for a mainsail. Uh, and um, today I, I wasn't on a lot of boats uh, during the last 20 years and there are boats uh, which have uh, this uh, one line reef where you should be able at least in theory to reef a uh, mainsail like this from the cockpit with just a single line but I'm extremely unhappy with that because uh, the, the line runs through all those rings uh, and by that it creates so much friction that you actually, it's almost impossible to handle. And um, everything works fine under such conditions we have here now. Uh, but uh, if uh, the wind picks up and, it, and, and you get a four, six, seven, eight, or even nine, then, uh, then uh, the, the things simply have to work easy and under those conditions and not just under such conditions. So, and that's actually the reason why I prefer this uh, standard reefing system. Uh, there's almost no friction. It's just the line is just going, uh, 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 just uh, going through the leech and, and comes out here uh, at the boom. Uh, and there is no other leads where, where, where the line is uh, let through. Okay, what else do I have on this side of the mast? So this here, actually this line is, uh, it can be used either for as a topping lift for the spinnaker pole or uh, I use it uh, for uh, hoisting uh, for hoisting the uh, my stay sail on the cutter stay, so it actually ends there, this is the upper end. Then I have here a, a halyard, a spare halyard, actually for a spinnaker. Unfortunately, I don't have a spinnaker, uh, but the thing that I miss most actually is a spinnaker pole, 
where I could actually, uh, which I could uh, to, uh, to put out uh, the clue of the Genoa, which I would have needed a lot uh, during this, uh, during this uh, uh, passage here already in light conditions. As you can see, it always flaps a little bit, although it's not too bad today. Um, what I have here, actually, you can see this track. Uh, that's uh, for a car, for a spinnaker, uh, for a spinnaker pole. It uh, runs far up, and uh, this is here for mounting a spinnaker pole. Uh, but unfortunately, the car, uh, which moves in this track, uh, as well as the spinnaker pole, are both not here anymore. So, in during the let's say history of this boat, it must have. Uh, gone uh, uh, lost at some time, I don't know. So probably I'll uh, get a spinnaker pole at some time again. Uh, I miss it really. In light conditions it could be really helpful. So on the other side, let's have a look at the other side here. Uh, what I have here is uh, the main halyard here. It's of course up since the mainsail is up. Uh, then I have here, that's a Gen uh, Genoa halyard. It's up as well, of course. Uh, these are the lazy jacks and uh, what else that's here? Uh, that's a boom lift. Uh, of course, it's uh, loose in the moment because uh, the sail is uh, holding the boom. Uh, yes, again, uh, the reefing lines up here, I have another winch. So actually I have three three winches here on the mast uh, to, to work with it, uh, to work with all that lines. So, and you might ask what this metal box here actually is. So let's have a look inside. So this is my dinghy garage. I always have to pro uh, the problem where to put this dinghy. And uh, this metal box uh, solved it, also I'm not 100% uh, happy with that, but it's better than nothing. And I can actually step on that, and uh, that's necessary because uh, you can see I'm now much higher up. Uh, when I have to attach the uh, main halyard to the main sail, uh, it's pretty high. So this, the, when the main sa uh, this, the, the main sail is dropped, then then it piles up here, pretty high. Uh, and uh, then I have to attach the main halyard here. Uh, and I'm almost, although I'm pretty tall, I'm almost too small for it. So, so I can do it, but uh, with uh, this box here, uh, it's much more, uh, much more comfortable. Uh, also, uh, to stack the sail uh, when dropping it, uh, I can stand here. So, so yes, it's, uh, it's a cool box. So that's it, back in the cockpit. Uh, you probably have seen it from, uh, uh, from the bow this year. Uh, that's uh, the solar panel. So it's not new and not the best, but uh, I have it, so it's better than nothing. So it is definitely the best for me. Um, well, I tried. Uh, to do everything as good as possible uh, with uh, these, uh, with this limited budget that I have. Um, so uh, of course there are uh, numerous, uh, numerous things that I would improve. Um, but um, I think uh, in general the boat is in a really good condition, uh, and. Uh, at some time you have to get off the dock, so because if you make try to make your boat perfect, you'll never leave uh, and work for years on a boat. So at some point you have to decide and say, so now it's right, let's go. Uh, and that's what I did. And uh, I feel good with it. So everything feels really good on the boat. And, uh, as I said, of course, there's always room for improve, uh, room to improvement, but uh, yes, uh, in general, everything's really good on, on that boat. So, 
let's go down and cut that video for you.